Uh, we're talking to Trent and his management. There'll be a few more before the end of the year. Um, really fortunate at the moment that we've got a group who want to stick together. Um, major sticking point for us right now is not having a great understanding of list sizes and those types of things. But um, look, I imagine that Trent will want to stay. There's uh, other younger guys who I think will probably announce over the next few weeks. But right now, um, looking really positive for the club. Clearly, we've had Sam uh, uh, announced yesterday, uh, a guy who you know, has really matured over the last two or three years here at the footy club. And uh, as you all heard last week, Charlie had you know, a number of clubs who were, who were after him, um, but he's decided to stay, which is a, a great thing for us. Sounds like financially you've, you're in a position to lock up some pretty important players for the future in the, in the coming term. Yeah, well, I mean, just despite what has uh, been misrepresented around the competition at various points in time, our salary cap is, uh, is managed to a point where we're comfortable to lock down some of the people who we believe are going to be key pillars you know, at our club longer term. So um, certainly Charlie is, is one of those guys who is just such a beacon you know, of strength for our group. The guys walk taller around him, as I said in the in the release, um, you know, he's, he's done a mountain of work uh, for us, you know, bullocking type stuff that we probably don't have anyone else on our list who can do. So, you know, he's a really important signature. Uh, and as I say, as you all heard last week, um, there were plenty of clubs who were interested in, uh, in securing his services. You know, those younger guys that you, you talk about, you wouldn't happen to be alluding to perhaps three, which we always lump together, that were drafted together? Uh, no, those, those guys are obviously locked in already for another couple of years, so um, there are others who are around um, at the moment who, who are young people who are looking to build their future in Adelaide and at the Port Adelaide Footy Club, which is, which is great for us. You spoke about other clubs kind of wanting, wanting Charlie. <coughs> what do you make of um, comments from Mark Mysterio, the Pro's footy director on Triple M about that, you know, a club might be interested, might be willing or uh, what are you talking about? What conflict or? Uh, um, Maybe it's a conflict. I mean, were you annoyed, upset when that came through? Uh, came out? No, I couldn't really care what Mark says. Um, uh, I think fundamentally, you know, Charlie was always going to stay here at Port Adelaide. We knew that um, that he wanted to be here. It was just about negotiating the right the right deal. Um, you know, conflicts are for whoever the individual is in the club to obviously manage themselves. And if people think that Mark's got that, well, that's something for him to worry about, not necessarily us. I mean, he did get right that there were multiple clubs who were looking out for Charlie. So um, it probably just irks when uh, you talk about one club and not the rest of them. But um, look, uh, we're really pleased that Charlie's here. So that's the, the crux of the matter for us. Is it a flat, is it straight three years or is it like No, no, it's a three-year deal uh, and you know, one that the club is really pleased with. Um, as I say, Charlie's such a big part of the group. Um, you know, I think what goes m missed as well is not only the work that he does, but he's, he's bringing a, along George Artis and Marshall and these guys and allowing you know, those types of guys to actually learn their craft with a bigger guy around them. And, and you can't underestimate that. I think across the competition, to have older players who are playing well uh, with a mixture of young guys who are coming through, um, you can't underestimate the importance of, of keeping some you know, experienced heads around in order to make sure that um, the young guys get a good grounding uh, in what they need. Given you don't know what the list sizes are yet, were there, was there a temptation to put off at these resigns to maybe a bit later in the season, or as you said, other clubs kind of wanted them? So did that kind of force your hand a little bit? Oh, not really. I mean, we, we put off our contract stuff throughout the, the COVID break and the freeze that the AFL had actually put on. Um, but once that lifted, you know, we knew the players who we wanted to secure, you know, first and foremostly. Obviously, we've still got, you know, let's say 10 players who are uncontracted on our list. So we've still got a fair bit of flexibility with what, you know, uh, whatever happens into the future. Um, but clearly Pep and, and Charlie are two guys who, um, you know, we're really pleased are going to be at the club long term and, and both who, you know, at various points have had interest from other clubs as well. So, 
So to have them commit to us at a time where we can put it off the table, leading into a you know a, a finals campaign, hopefully, um, you know, is is a good thing for the for the footy club. Brad Evans also out. What sort of discussions do you have with him regarding his obviously concussion history, the news regarding Danny Crawley, uh, whether he's <coughs> on or not? There... Well, look, that it, it's an interesting one because you know, on one hand, you're you're driven by the medical staff who, who have a responsibility to make sure that the player is healthy before he comes back on the field or comes back into play. And as you've seen, we've been really cautious with Brad over time. Um, you know, it's a discussion that we're obviously going to have to continue to have with someone like Brad, who has unfortunately put his head into spots that not too many other players actually are willing to do. And it's, uh, again, testament to his courage that he, he constantly finds himself in in difficult situations, but clearly it's one that we're going to have to manage in the future. And I'm, I know that Brad uh, is mindful of that as well. Um, you know, what we've got now is, um, you know, the, the remainder of this season to work through those things. And I'm sure that you know, both the club and Brad will talk about whatever the future looks like at the appropriate time. What do you make of uh, today's decision about the grand final? Was it the right one? I look for, for, as a South Australian, I mean, I would have loved to have um, had the, the grand final here in, in South Australia. And, and I think the, the South Australian footy public, you know, would have, would have embraced that totally. But uh, I can also see um, the reasons why the, the AFL decided to, to uh, uh, have hold the game in, in Queensland. Obviously, um, you know, we hope to be in a position where we're, where we're close enough to it. But ultimately, as Charlie said before, I think most people right now are more um, inclined to want to do whatever work is needed to play in it rather than actually worry about where it's played. Home finals, though, prospect of those, should you get <coughs> there and earn those? As it looks like you might. That must be exciting for the club. Yeah, it's, well, it's exciting to play in front of our people. Um, yeah, whether it be a minor round game or a finals, clearly there's, you know, there's more on the end of finals. But uh, there's no, and, and again, you heard from Charlie, you know, the guys love playing in front of our crowd. And so to... Uh, to potentially qualify in a spot where we um, are going to have a home final. I mean, that needs to be the first thing that we worry about. Um, and then obviously, as you know, we've, we've said to qualify as high up the ladder as we possibly can in order to potentially have multiple finals here in South Australia. Um, but first and foremostly, we've got North Melbourne this weekend. But you know, it's, a, it's a great thing to think that we might be able to play home finals here in South Australia. Do you think in a year where there might be some teams playing? <coughs> I mean, potentially, yeah. I mean, obviously, Brisbane are going to, you know, have an opportunity to have basically stay at home all year. So they're, they're uh, it's going to affect teams in, in different ways. Um, but uh, clearly, <coughs> getting some of those teams maybe out of Queensland and down here um, might not be a bad thing for for us if that was to be the case. But as I say, you know, our first port of call here is to make sure that we qualify as high as we can and, and go from there. When you make Uh, we'll, we'll make some of those calls over the, the, you know, between now and the end of the year. Obviously, you've got a responsibility to the to the playing group as to when the season is over to to give them a bit of an indication. And we're we're obviously working with players, managers at the moment as to what you know the future looks like. The the fantastic, I guess, benefit that we have right now is that we've got a group who all want an opportunity to play in a you know an AFL final series. So, you know, we're not talking about anyone who's walking away from the club. You know, uh, at any point soon, all of our guys are going to want to be in a position where they um, are, are fit and healthy uh, in order to play in the finals. Because we do know that you know injuries happen, and players who you know we thought might have been further down the depth chart, someone like Boyd Woodcock, who who you know got a few games recently, um, who you know a month earlier wasn't looked at, you know suddenly you know comes back into the mix. So um, you know we think we've got a good depth in our squad at the moment. Um, whether those guys are still here in, in a year's time, I know that they're all focused on what we can do you know, right now. Is it even more something for those clubs who haven't made finals or you know, out of finals that just <coughs> fringe out of favour and say, hang on, I'm, why am I trying to trouble anymore? You know, I won't get out to live my life for a little bit, try and get into the contract. Oh, look, I can, I can see, I mean, obviously Fremantle have done something like that, obviously. Um, you know, there's similar things happening across the road. So, um, you know, I imagine that that is just the way that you know, these things will play out. I, I can, 
I can see, in fairness, I can, I can see why um, there would be uh, concern around players who don't believe they're going to be at the club next year um, being able to adhere to the training regime or the protocols that are in place at the moment. Um, you know, certainly, if there's no uh, nothing on the end of what they're actually going to be training for. Have you made a call on Jack Horse yet? <coughs> uh, as in? No, no, Jack's contracted for next year. Um, so, um, no, I mean, right now Jack is, is in a position where uh, clearly we need to get some games into him. That's been a real struggle for us this year. Um, you know, that, that's, if I reflect on the year and, and to not whinge in any way, it, it's been probably one of our greatest concerns is that you've got all the teams up in Queensland who are able to play uh, against each other, um, whereas we've only had Adelaide to play here and, and at various points in time we haven't, um, you know, we, our schedules haven't aligned or we haven't had enough players to play. So, you know, in hindsight, we would have loved to have been able to get more games into um, the guys who weren't selected at AFL level, um, but at the same, and that's probably hurt Jack in, in many respects, Vicky, but um, yeah, I think overall, you know, we've got a group right now who's really healthy. Um, you know, we, we may well go into this weekend with no one injured um, on our list at all, which, you know, would be a pretty significant thing. Um, well, sorry, no new injuries from, from last week and probably, you know, 42, 43 players available, which, you know, would be unheard of, I think. Um, that's probably one of the byproducts of not playing too many games at the next level down. Um, but, uh, yeah, watsy has got some work to do, no doubt. How's Dan and Pete going? I guess obviously <coughs> he had some harsh words, but he had some harsh words, but obviously they sort of asked, yeah, how have they responded to it? How have they been going through? Well, Dan will play this week. So, so um, uh, for you all here, Dan, Dan's selected in our team for, for our weekend's game. Um, Look, he's, they've done all that we could have expected of them um, through the last couple of weeks um, after making you know, what was a, a significant mistake and, and copping their right whack for it. Um, I can't fault either of them for wanting to either front up to their teammates, front up to the coaches uh, or do the right things since then. So, as I say, um, Houston will get a game at AFL level this week. Would you... Um um, I don't watch many of Adelaide's games, um, but fair to say that at this point in time, and, and it's probably the reason why Rue came across the information that he did, uh, which I'll say again was, was absolutely correct, is that our list managers uh, and people in my roles, the, the greatest power that you have right now is knowledge and understanding where people are going to end up actually can help you to manufacture other deals around that. So, of course, we've got an interest in where Brad Crouch is going to end up, but, but it's no greater than where some other players in the competition are going to end up so that we know where we're going to position ourselves uh, into the future and with our list. Chris, just Last couple of goals. Just back on the final position, <coughs> I recognise you're not a health official, um, but when it comes to crowd numbers for finals, um, how many port fans or how many people would you like to see in the stadiums? Uh, I have trouble dealing with my own health, let alone worrying about um, um, the, the health of um, a whole heap of other people. So I'll leave that to um, the people who are far more qualified than I am. Uh, suffice to say, we'd like as many as we possibly can within whatever the health guidelines are.